What do you call a man who doesn't respect your privacy? Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg has a ball of money the size of the moon and the personality of a bowl of oatmeal. He's like Pinocchio if Pinocchio's wish was to be a real lizard. He's like Data from Star Trek if Data got a computer chip that made him less human. And speaking of Data, you can tell Mark Zuckerberg would make a good friend because he listens to everything you say. When Mark Zuckerberg travels, he brings three chargers, one for his laptop, one for his cell phone, and one for himself. When he sees a psychiatrist, it's called tech support. I heard that he once got into a fight with Jeffrey Epstein. Hollywood made a movie out of it. The movie was called Alien vs. Predator. I do not like Mark Zuckerberg. Now, why don't I like this guy? You might think it's because he's a billionaire tech nerd. But Elon Musk is also a billionaire tech nerd, and I like Elon Musk. So what's the difference between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg? Well, one wants to go to outer space to colonize Mars. The other came from outer space to colonize Earth. I do not like the one who came from outer space to colonize Earth. And yet, there's something I like about him. There's something I really like about him. There's something I like about him so much that I can say I love Mark Zuckerberg, even though I can't stand him and his haircut looks like it came with 30 free hours of America Online. What do I like about Mark Zuckerberg? Well, speaking only for myself here, I like people who image God in various ways, people who reflect God in various ways. And I like them even more when they're imaging God as they're talking about being created in the image of God. So Lex Friedman asks Mark Zuckerberg, a question. Big ridiculous question. What do you think is the meaning of life? I think that, well, so, uh, there are probably a couple of different ways that that I would go at this. But I think it gets back to this last question that we talked about, about the duality between you have the people around you who you care the most about, and then there's like this bigger thing that maybe you're building. Lex asks him about the meaning of life, and Mark focuses on two things, relationships with other people and building things. I think Mark may be onto something. And I, I think that in my own life, I mean, I, I sort of think about this tension, but I mean, it's, look, I, mean, I, I started this whole company and my life's work is around human connection. So um, I think it's intellectually probably the thing that I go to first is just that human connection is the meaning. Mark thinks that we don't value human connection enough. And I, I mean, I think that it's a thing that our society probably systematically undervalues. I mean, I just remember, you know, when I was growing up and in in school, you know, it's like do your homework and then go play with your friends after. And it's like, no, well, what if what if playing with your friends is the point? <laughs> as much as we don't like Facebook mining our data, and by our data I mean your data, I got out of that hellhole years ago. As much as we don't like Facebook selling our data to the highest bidders, namely companies that will use the data to manipulate us, as much as we don't like the censorship and the bias and the manipulation of the platform, Mark Zuckerberg's intention for Facebook and for the metaverse he's building seems to be to create places where people from around the world can interact. He wants to use the internet to increase human connection. He wants to bring people closer together. The endless trunks of money he makes while doing it are just a perk. So human connection is part of the meaning of life. But the other part is building something. There's a, a rabbi who I've studied with who, who kind of gave me this. We, we were talking through Genesis and the, the Bible and the Torah. And, um, and they're basically walking through. It's like, okay, you go through the the seven days of, of, of creation and, um, and 
it's basically, it's like, why does the Bible start there? Right? It's like, it could have started anywhere, right? In terms of like how to live. The Bible could have started with a list of rules, but it started with God creating. Why is that? Basically, it starts with talking about how God created people in his, her image. But the Bible starts by talking about how God created everything. So I actually think that there's like a a compelling argument that I think I've always just found meaningful and inspiring that a lot of the point of what sort of religion has been telling us that we should do is to create and build things. Genesis 1 in a nutshell. God creates, God creates, God creates, God creates, God creates, God creates, and then God creates human beings, male and female, and he says that men and women are created in his image. So the immediate context of God saying that human beings are created in his image is God creating. I really like watching people fumble their way to an important point. In my video, Norm MacDonald, The Image of God, we took a close look at Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28, and we saw that in the verses that say man was created in the image of God, what it means to be created in the image of God has something to do with relationships. In the verses that say man was created in the image of God, there's man's relationship with God, there's man's relationship with other human beings, and there's man's relationship with the natural world. And man was created to image the eternal God in all three of these relationships. That's the meaning of image of God you get from Genesis 1, 26 through 28. But as our new friend Mark pointed out, the context of that passage is God creating a universe. So God creates a place for people to have relationships, and he says that men and women are created in his image. What does Mark Zuckerberg, who's created in the image of God, do with his life? So th these things are not necessarily at odds. I mean, I think like, I mean, that's, and I think probably to some degree you'd expect me to say something like this because I've dedicated my life to creating things that help people connect. He creates digital worlds for human relationships. Talk about imaging God. Now, unfortunately, the interview ends right after this, but we can think through this a bit more. Mark Zuckerberg and co created Facebook, which is a kind of world where people interact. But now they're creating the metaverse, which is an actual virtual universe. So he creates a universe for people to build connections. And what do people do with the universe they've been given? They instantly start horribly abusing each other. A British woman who recently decided to join the Zuckerverse says that she was virtually gang raped within seconds of joining. To be clear, she wasn't gang raped in real life. Her avatar was gang raped virtually. Think about this. You build a universe. You want to bring people closer together and people use the universe you built for gang rape. So what do you do? You make some rules. You put together a trust and safety team to enforce the rules. But as soon as you start making and enforcing rules, everyone starts complaining. Because wherever you draw the line on any difficult issue, there are going to be people on one side of the line who say you're being too strict, and there are going to be people on the other side of the line who say you're not being strict enough. There's a lot of push. They're saying, okay, you've got to do more. There's clearly a lot more bad content that, that people aren't reporting. Um, or that you're not getting to, and you need to get more effective at that. And I was pretty sympathetic to that. But then I think at some point along the way, there started to be almost equal issues on both sides of, okay, actually, you're kind of taking down too much stuff, mm -hmm. right? Or or some of the stuff is is, is borderline, um, and, and it wasn't really bothering anyone, and they didn't report it. Um, so is that is that really an issue that you need to take down? Um, whereas we, we still, we still have the critique on the other side too, where a lot of people think we're not doing enough as we built the technical capacity. I think it becomes more philosophically interesting, almost where you want to be on the line. The challenge with free speech is that everyone agrees that there is a line where if you're actually about to do physical harm to people, that there should be restrictions, 
The thing that everyone agrees disagrees on is what is the definition of real harm? The result is that everyone is angry. And who do we get angry at? The one who built the platform or the metaverse or the universe. And we don't just get angry about the rules. We get angry because the people who enforce the rules are, quite frequently, total scumbags. The reason I left Facebook wasn't that I had a problem with the rules. I had a problem with the people who were paid to enforce the rules because they didn't seem to care about the rules at all. They just seemed to ban a person for saying something they didn't like. So someone would send me a death threat. I would take a screenshot of the death threat and I would post it and say, hey everyone, look what this guy just said. He said he's going to kill me. I was trying to shame the person. And Facebook would suspend me for hate speech. I once got suspended for posting a famous picture of a man who refused to salute Hitler. I posted the picture with a circle around the guy who refused to salute Hitler and a caption that said, be this guy. Be the sort of person who wouldn't salute an evil person, even if everyone around you was saluting the evil person. Facebook banned the picture as hate speech. Kind of ironic. It's like Facebook was saying, how dare you tell people not to submit to an evil and corrupt authority. This happened over and over and over again until I got sick of the platform and left. Now, it wasn't Mark Zuckerberg who was banning my posts and repeatedly suspending me. It was either morally depraved or irretrievably stupid content moderators who were suspending me. But I had no idea who was banning content that should never be banned. So who did I come to despise? You guessed it, the face of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. He's the one who set up the massively defective system. So he's the one I didn't like. I now have no desire to be on Facebook and no desire to enter the metaverse. In fact, I can only think of one reason to enter the metaverse. You know what we should do? We should all join the matrix. I mean, the metaverse. Then we should wait a while. We should wait until we've all been plugged into it for a long time. We should wait until the metaverse is reality to us. And then once the metaverse is reality to us, We'll start a community of people who don't believe that Mark Zuckerberg even exists. We'll make fun of anyone who believes in Mark Zuckerberg. That'll be the ultimate slap in his cyborg face. So I like Mark Zuckerberg for the ways he images God, but a lot of people, including myself, don't like him because of some of the decisions he's made and some of the ways people are treated in the worlds he's created. This hostility towards Mark Zuckerberg leads to an intriguing question. Why do you think so many people dislike you? Some even hate you. And how do you regain their trust and support, given everything you've just said? We know why people don't like Mark Zuckerberg. So the important question is, what can Mark do to regain people's trust? Mark has no clue. I can only speak for myself here, but I can tell you all exactly what Mark Zuckerberg could do to regain my trust. Mark is building the metaverse. Many people are going to use the metaverse to abuse and degrade each other. So rules will need to be made. Rules will need to be enforced. But the people who are paid to make and enforce these rules will also use their positions of power to abuse and degrade users. And there will be absolutely nothing that users can do about it. Same as Facebook, same as Twitter, same as YouTube. Users will feel completely helpless as the people who are given power over them use that power to abuse them. And these same users who feel helpless will think about Mark Zuckerberg and his billions of dollars. And he'll seem like he's incredibly distant, so distant that it's like he's in another world. If Mark Zuckerberg wanted to regain my trust, he would have to enter the metaverse, not as Mark Zuckerberg with all his privileges, but as a normal user. The people who run the metaverse, the people who enforce the rules, the other users, they couldn't know that he was Mark Zuckerberg. He'd have to live like any other person in the metaverse. 
Then he'd have to expose the problems in the metaverse from within the metaverse. He'd have to expose the horrible behavior of other users and especially of the people who enforce the rules. He'd have to be attacked and beaten by other users who are angry at him for shining a light on their behavior. He'd have to be repeatedly suspended by the people who enforce the rules because they don't like what he's saying. He'd have to be horribly mistreated while doing absolutely nothing wrong until the people who enforce the rules terminate his account. That's what he'd have to do to regain my trust. Whatever else Mark Zuckerberg did after that, I would at least know that he understands what it's like to be in the world he's created. Imagine a creator who did that.